535 and we have quorum, so we will call to order. And I will take notes tonight. Um, this is not our regularly scheduled meeting night. Um, we, did not, we were not able to um, have quorum for a December meeting, so we decided to meet twice in January one and tonight. The primary focus is going to be on the mayor's um, working group report about plan handling and how the where next question would like to respond to that. And we'll go back to um, looking at our data from our surveys at the, the regularly scheduled meeting at the end of the month. We have some other new agenda items, so. In fact, I have packed agenda. Thank you. I need to get in order. Uh, so we have no public comment. Uh, there's no members of the public here. And so the next item would be to review minutes from October and November. Um, I don't believe we have October's minutes yet. But, um, but I trust they will come. Okay. We can we can review them at the next meeting. There's no urgency to do them now. Um, and I, I make a motion that we accept the minutes for November, but with this fix in the spelling mark. Right. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? We covered the the spelling mistake. Yeah. I mean, I didn't see anything else. I just thought they were very thorough. Thank mm -hmm. you. Very Wonderfully thorough. Yeah. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Great. Thank you for this. Okay. So let's open it up to a conversation about the panhandling report. Oh, were you here when the mayor? No, I didn't think so. Yeah. Um, well, Megan did a great job. And you read the report. And you read the report, yeah. It was at really a, just such a thorough, I thought, and well, well done report. Um, and I, the floor is open for us to talk about any part of it, uh, but I imagine that we might want to focus on the recommendations that the work group proposed and how our commission might be able to support it by those. Just to put this in context, I don't know if people saw, but there's somebody on the pavement in the corner of the building outside the front of city. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or eat to to use the 
gone through and consent to, to just, you know, just use a space. Mm -hmm. um, but I heard that recently, our Starbucks have, they have um, actually posted on the wall their own code of conduct. And I don't know if it's from that, so I want to see the person. Um, but it seems to be just aimed at the, the patrons. Um, and what I've heard is that in the last year or two, it's kind of become a formal gathering place for people who don't have day centers to go to. Mm -hmm. um, and it may be related or not, but there are less um, uh, you know, uh, houseboats or hand handlers who, who choose to stay there. Fewer, so fewer, fewer than, yeah, than fewer there used than to be? There used to be. That's what I'm told. Um, I mean, they still, they just don't stay. Um, so, I guess, you know, some businesses are already kind of feeling maybe, I don't know, because of this report and the findings, that maybe they feel more empowered to, to communicate some sort of code. Mm -hmm. My observation is, having been here for, for a long time, like way back to the 80s when they were deinstitutionalizing the state hospital, and they suddenly put a lot of people on the street with very few resources and places to go. Mm -hmm. And um, there were certain places that were gathering places, definitely. Um, and it also, but then it seemed to me there was a time when. Um, Various institutions would adopt one or two people. At the headers I used to go to, there was a lady who would come in and swear at us all and go to the, use the bathroom and have a coffee, and then she would go away again and come back a few hours later. It, it was sort of her place. And you saw that all over Northampton. And I think it still happens to a certain extent. Um, but I think the numbers are greater. Particularly of younger ones, I think, the younger people um, who maybe haven't found those places in the same way. But I think the idea of focusing on the things we can do without too many resources is a really good idea. But what's really needed actually are things with need resources. Part of the mes uh, public messaging is to um, dispel those misconceptions, mm -hmm. right? So they've already and there's a discussion about you know from the surveys that they've done for the community. <laughs> Quarter of the report feeling that safe or crime by can tell other behaviors down to home. But at the same time, uh, few of them actually, more of them have issues with substance abuse or you know, mental illness and other things than actual criminal histories. Um, either about to happen or has happened. There's a documentary film about it's um, it was last week. Yeah. It was last week. And so uh, there are some things that are already beginning to happen. I went after I read the report I Googled but how is the press here covered this? And so the Gazette did a lot of writing. The advocate 
actually is talking more about other communities, Holyoke and Greenfield, but they didn't really specifically talk about Northampton. But there's a lot, all of the writing was consistent about dispelling certain myths. Um, and so that's been going on. I, I agree. I think the only way the Human Rights Commission could be active in this is to talk about communication, because um, I don't think we're going to help change the St. Mary's building and pass in parsonage to a community resource center, which is what a lot of people think you know, mm -hmm. ought to happen. Um, um, so I guess we'd have to find a way to do that. Um, again, I think it's, it's hard to do it by ourselves. And it's trying to find other organizations who are trying to do the same thing, and is there a way we can turn on? Well, what the mayor asked us specifically is uh, to, to think about which options should be at the city's top priority. Really? Yeah, and whether there were any of these that we can get involved in. But I think he, he's eager to hear what we think are. Yeah. Um, what was the documentary you were writing? Rio Contrada's. Um, oh, oh, oh. Um, Rio Contrada um, is a local, he, he lives in California now, but he's, he grew up here. And he did an independent film project. Where, I, maybe it was the prone room, or I forget where it was. I think you're right. The prone room was um, debuted last week. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I mean, I love the idea of a flexible flash job program. Um, I also really like the idea of messaging and the multidiscipline de-escalation team. Mm -hmm. no, those, aren't, those aren't things we would do, but I think right. if we're just talking about what we, what we think could be priority. I mean, they're all great ideas. Mm -hmm. I don't know if there's any sort of de-escalation team, multidisciplinary, I and mean, I don't know. Yeah. But I've certainly seen it work out yeah. Well, I think um, there have been some hot button issues in the city that make me think it could be useful here. Um, yeah. In particular, around this. mixed feelings about this code of ethics, even though that is the one thing that I think kind of would fall squarely mm -hmm. within what we would do. And my mixed feelings are only that late. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, okay. Reciprocal. Yeah, because this is, I think, the intent is to you know, have both parties so sort of this, I respect this code of ethics, you know, um, and, um, yeah, so I, I didn't really get into the piece of it, yeah. but, um, The yeah, power discrepancies are so great. The power discrepancies are yeah, so great. Absolutely. And it would be, I feel like it would end up something like what the Starbucks is doing, not to you know, scapegoat them, but it would just be very one sided. Like, we would, we would, if you would like to use our space, we would need you to keep your voices down, you know, respect other patients, um, don't harass, this sort of thing. Um, I mean, because, yeah, and, uh, well, I think it's. 
Well, you could, you could play, but usually codes of ethics are kind of voluntary on a very yeah. Yeah, so, so. And right now it's a service. Yeah, but they did say other communities have done it. Mm -hmm. um. in, my, in my day job, um, we talk a lot about covenants, mm -hmm. and they're sometimes misinterpreted as um, lists of behavior rules, um, but really what they're meant to be uh, aspirational statements of how we will be in community together. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't like necessarily the code of ethics language, um, but perhaps one way we can contribute is to imagine it as a community covenant. Accountability is, of course, it's on the other system, but it, I believe there's a way that it can be crafted where it names our aspirations for how we would be in relationship together. Mm -hmm. like, is covenant a religious term? Or it is. I wonder yeah. if there's another non-religious term. I mean, it, it goes in both. Well, so in, the, in, in, business. The, in the social work world, we would call it a behavioral contract. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. That won't go in. Well, it, 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 it has a different feel. It, well, the problem with <laughs> The problem with the behavioral contract is it still tends to be one-sided. Right. It, it goes, whereas covenant, like everyone who's going to be... We will be respectful to one another. another. And, but it's everybody gets to say what they feel is an important part of the whole thing. So, I mean, it's quite magical when it mm -hmm. can happen, but it's sort of how you, how you get everybody who needs to participate in a covenant together. Right. Well, I just looked it up. It's not, it doesn't have to be religious. It doesn't have to be. It, it, yeah. it, yeah. it originated with, you know, the Bible. The type well, it's, it's, it says contract drawn up by deed. There in, when you sell a business, there's a covenant to non compete. Right, so, yeah, that's it's right. Both, it's both in. But I, I would want to use it more in a relational sense than in a behavioral sense. Yeah, right. But a way of saying that in this community we believe everyone deserves respect. Which which comes out of the, the uh, dignity pledge too. Yeah. So, that's I mean it feels like it's an extension. And of course you're not going to get hundred percent compliance, but you can have still a kind of and how you get people to sign on. Mm -hmm. I'm not quite sure. Mm -hmm. So the thing that I'm trying for is for this being on character, right? Right. This is, um, yeah, something that's a, sh you know, a shared sense of responsibility. Mm -hmm. This is the community we want to be. Mm -hmm. and if we were to do that, maybe for the same sort of approach, you know, having the, the team of people that can interview the same groups of people, mm -hmm. we try to um, insert this conversation. Yeah, that's true. We would not be able to, I mean, I, for people that I'm interacting with that have problems with them, like those have people out of town, I don't know how to communicate or try to enforce in any way this code of conduct. Much more transient and, um, mm -hmm. So it would be a few months. The other, the, into this. the other audience, I think, is our um, older members. You know, there was definitely a, a sharp division between older Northampton residents and younger ones in terms of their beliefs around people on the street. Um, but we don't know if that translates to behavior. You know what we I mean? We don't. Mm -hmm. But um, 
And the other thing I wonder about is how would you distribute this? Like, it's not like, it may be one thing if we were saying we want a, a community covenant around buskers, right? Because I think they have to get a permit, so when they get their permit, they can be given this. But people who are panhandling don't get a permit. So. Um, well, I'm thinking about um, the, we have signs on the borders on some of the roads leading into the city that says Northampton is a domestic violence free zone. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Does that mean we actually don't have domestic violence? Right. Of course we do. Yeah. However, it names our intention yeah. in a public way that people can see. So I, we can certainly, you know, newspaper articles, yeah. something, you know, read at the city council, all of those things, but we could also explore having an actual something on the edges of downtown that says, yeah. you're entering a vibrant living space. Respect yeah. each other. Exactly. Yeah, that's a great idea. I would say I would love to be able to find some space for people to keep their stuff safe. Mm -hmm. And that seems like such a huge thing. I, mean, I don't know if there was, and I don't know how you do it, but if somebody had a, a free basement or, I mean, if, if there was any way to. Underneath first churches or something. I just think we'd get more buy in for that if we were also really responding to this need. Yes. So, yeah, so you like established downtown storage units. Mm -hmm. And actually, what I have in my notes from last time that that's already started working on. So, I don't know, remember in what form, but I guess they said some people are working on that. Um, I don't think it would be Amherst because I was taking notes about what the mayor and Alan were saying. So I don't, I didn't write any more. No, I don't think they gave us more details. I think they just said people have started working. Uh -huh. But I just think that would be a huge thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And of course, what would be really good is things like showers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Space, but anyway, storage. So, Safe storage. so, so, so far, we've said the storage units messaging campaign. Um, well, I, Booker, I'm surprised you haven't said anything about the community day center. Well, no, that is what I, I actually think that's the most important thing. Yeah. Okay. But so, I, I just don't see how. That was identified in Northampton Connects yeah. before this mm -hmm. report came out. That yeah. That's what people felt would be helpful and useful. Um, it's just millions of dollars. Yeah, but we don't have to come up with money or figure out how to make yeah. it happen. Yeah. We're just we're just yeah. we're just out. But to me, kind of that that's bubbled up the most is because it would help people be safe. The reasons. Northampton connects the people, the participants, thought it would be useful, is that it wouldn't just be for people who are homeless. It was also elders could go there, others could go there, and it becomes a shared space where you actually start talking to each other rather than, well, that's another place for the homeless to be, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna walk them as far around it as I think. It becomes another shared community space. Um, so it, need, it needs multiple things, not just blockers. Okay. Um, so it's, that's why a lot of people were for that. Um, and I think that would be the most useful thing. It's also, to me, the most difficult thing. Okay. Yeah. There's lots of space for it. Somebody has to buy the space. Yeah. I know a certain minister who believes that the Catholic Church ought to mm -hmm. donate mm -hmm. these empty buildings. They sure should. Or, in fact, there's a lot of people who would agree with that certain so. minister. Um, well, anyway, part of them. Yeah. Or, or, I mean, uh, I, it's not so simple because I know that 
work needs to be done on the buildings as part of the reason for the shutdown. So even if they were given, mm. it's, yeah. it's complicated. Mm -hmm. um, well, Karen, your thought about the, the signs in the story, that, that could go along with the public messages. Yes. Yeah. 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 I think all of these recommendations ought to happen. Yeah. yeah. He's asking for prioritization. So, code of ethics. I also agree. I think that's not. I wonder if it's possible to say there's something we don't think you should pursue. Mm -hmm. Or at least not as it's described. Yeah. And it sounds like the, the folks that are the panhand that are engaged in panhandling did not think the vending machine was something that they needed. Oh, they said that? I didn't remember that. So what's not recommended? Yes, they said that um, people in Northampton are already generous with stuff. Mm -hmm. And without walkers, of course. They have to I mean, there are people who use the library already. Yes. A man, a gentleman who wear, waits every morning from about 8.30 on with a huge bag. And it has been around here forever. I mean, yeah, you know, and the library is kind of a community center. Quite a community center, I guess. Um, but I wonder if, and they're really, I think, really welcoming. And I wonder if the library would be willing to have like an outdoor locker situation. You know, they probably don't have room inside, but and it shouldn't be inside because it really needs to be available accessible year round. I mean, around the clock. But it seems like a sturdy outdoor storage locker. Yeah, a bit like the um, you know the the Amazon box mm -hmm. drop boxes at the garage. Mm -hmm. I love the way you say garage. <laughs> <laughs> it makes it sound so much better. I wonder how much uh, we should address the, the naysayers. Yeah. Those who are concerned that the you know, provision of more services and, you know, would attract a larger population of the yeah. houseless or the unhappy or members. Um, I mean, I, I kind of hear that in the responses, the concerned responses. Um, and that's just. I mean, obviously the problem is money, but it feels to me, you think about this town of however many we are, 30,000 or something, when the circles of care were created, 800 people stepped forward. I mean, I think, I think people are deeply ambivalent about it, 
so many people on the street. And I wondered if they actually wouldn't, I mean, I wonder if they would be willing to contribute to a place so that people were less visible and on the street. If they were being bothered by them less, would they actually, you know, sort of bothered in a public way? I don't, I don't know. I mean, and as it said in the report, people give stuff. Um, I don't, I, I'm not sure. So if you could direct like cash donations to something like, um, you know, for something specific, like creation of lockers in place, I wonder if you could kind of jumpstart some of these things. Do you think that there would be, there would be interest um, getting beyond just It seems to me, it was a number of years ago that when Claire was there, she tried to make this project when the, when the, you know, the frog in front of first churches were put, put up, was put up. And she really tried to encourage us to contribute to a fund rather than to give to individual people. But it seemed to me to be successful for a bit, but then it seemed to fizzle out. And then the frog got broken into it. Um, I think that groups that like that would have a really that should be at the table and creating this to me would be like the mana people, like the places that draw in people who don't have homes. So the mana people. Um, so, oh, um, the the cot shelter and Grove Street because. Like Grove Street and the Cot Shelter, people are there, but then they have to leave during the day. So it seems like it's in everybody's interest to, to have a place to have people put their stuff. If they can't leave it at Cot Shelter, which I don't think they can, they may they probably can't leave it at Grove Street. But. Cathedral in the night is another. Yeah. Yes. Um, go back to what the ask was. Is are, I tr now I'm trying to get I'm trying to free myself from being able to generate the solution. Yeah, right. So instead, saying amongst this list of possibilities, here's what I think are the most important. Are the most. Important. That's what I think he's asking us. Okay. And secondarily, it might be if there's anything we think we could help with. I mean, we could certainly take more of a role in messaging. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, it, it sort of goes with the themes of the civility pledge and yeah. um, the escalation, some other things that people have worked on you know, within this commission. Um, I, I think what, what we might want to do is prioritize the other things that we, we would like the city, the town to work on. Work on. Yeah. Because I, I think there are other organizations who are trying to decide should we set up, should we try to do a capital campaign mm -hmm. to do this? And um, but I think there's something about a community center, and there's also something about a storage center. The, I, I share the view that I think people are pretty giving here. Mm -hmm. And there are, there's a lot that goes on. It, it's going to require something very different to start funding a facility because it's how do you fund it and then how do you keep it going? Yeah, right. Um, so it's. And is it staffed? It, I think most people um, um, theorize. I guess what they did when they were living in England. They were running community. They were they were actually running a facility like what people think needs to happen. Mm. Who was that? Um, he's the former minister of Peter Ross. Peter Ross. Oh, the first okay. church. A long time. Um, and so yeah, they did that, yeah. and they're sort of saying that it looks like they need the same model here. Um, I've never asked them how that was funded, but that's what they were doing. 
So it does, it's, it's a facility. There's got to, there are people who have to be in place, so it's going to be an really expensive thing. And you, uh, well, I also think this create, this is one of those things where it's like, it's like a continuum and you got to figure out where are you going to get in there. But I think this creating a low threshold housing units is key. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, because there needs to be options, like options for people to, to be on the shelter before they can get apartments, you know? So, and I know that there's, uh, some, there are some people working on that. Mm -hmm. There's a woman at the Department of Mental Health who's working really hard on it. Um, so, I think that should be up there. Um, Just to respond to what you were okay. saying, um, there's more money available, I think. I don't know now, because of Brexit and things like that, but there used to be in social services were certainly funds for homeless shelters, I mean, provided by the government, I mean, both local authorities and the overall government. There definitely were places. Um, I don't know now, I'm out of date. Um, and there are more people on the streets, but less than. Oh, yeah? I think so. Well, actually, that's not true anymore. Now that I think about it, that I take that back. There are a lot of people who come in from poorer countries in Europe because they're allowed to come, yeah, right. or have been, yeah. and they are living in dreadful situations. Well, I also, I heard something on NPR yesterday about Ireland having a homeless crisis. Um, that's really bad um, because the cost of housing has gone up and some companies are buying up lots of housing and Airbnb is another thing. It's, it's Ireland is like San Francisco. Mm -hmm. It's become extraordinarily successful yeah. as a business capital um, and it's pricing out. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think the church is doing less, the Catholic church is doing less than it used to. Used to be a sort of place mm, yeah. last resort, and I think it's less. Yeah. Calling back the question, because we've gone over time on this, but um, what are the priorities? I guess I'm struggling with the priorities that would have the highest impact. Mm -hmm versus the priorities that would be easiest, those sort of low-hanging fruit. Well, we could send it whatever, however we do it, whether it's by email or a letter, we mm -hmm. could say these are the things yeah. that are our highest priorities, and we could say that some of these have, we, we think would have high impact and some are low-hanging fruit, mm -hmm. and we could just divide it that way. Maybe, and then I think maybe we should also say these are the things, in our opinion, we don't think are worth anybody's time. Mm -hmm. And if we all agree, the code of ethics, for a variety of reasons, like, do we all agree on that one? Oh, we started sure. to say about a couple. Yeah, years. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want it to become sort of a behavioral, yeah, um, punitive thing. But I was just struck in reading the report about how many of the people who are um, are living street experiences are that's the the overarching complaint is how terribly they're treated by people walking by. And that might have a bigger impact on their experience of yes. the community. Um, came out and said, this we want to do. In the human rights commission, I think that's a really important thing to speak to. Yes, yeah, yes, that's true. But I wonder if there's a way to do, I mean, I think we all agree that a sort of punitive code of ethics, here's this little book, you know, this is what you have to do if someone gets you those cents. I, I think it's different from maybe, I think the idea of the, the signs on them as you come into Northampton. It, I, how you phrase it exactly, this is a community where we... Treat each other with respect. That I was going to say the same treat thing. each other the way we... Golden rule or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Black rule. Right <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Well, so on that one, <laughs> yeah, on that one, um, maybe what we could do is say we like it, but we think it needs to be created together with people mm -hmm. who are doing the panhandling as well as people who are, you know, walk, you know, on the streets. Yeah, right. So, right. On the downtown stakeholders. Yeah, right. Downtown. It's funny because really, like, um, I was seeing it a little differently. Like, I was seeing it as code for um, how to, because I've heard people complain about aggressive panhandlers. So I was seeing this as really a way of saying, trying to get the people who are panhandling to behave differently. But based on what you're saying, it could just as well be trying to get people who are walking by the panhandlers to behave differently. Yeah. I hadn't thought of that. I forgot about that part. <clears throat> so I'm willing to take a stab at, the, at drafting a message to the mayor that send out for comments. Um, but let me just see if I have, I'm not sure I have a sense of the group. Do you want to go through each bullet sure. point and see, like, hopefully, well, no. Could we just go through each We can, point? yes. Stop interrupting yourself, fuckers. <laughs> <laughs> so, recommendations of the work group, um, creating a public messaging campaign. We like that one. We, I think like we that. all like that one. We all think that there's a role we could have in it. And I think you should include in that your idea about the, mm -hmm. the signs. Yeah. Yes. I mean, I have to say one more thing about that. Yeah. I think you know, a public messaging campaign should also do a little bit of education about the rights people have to panhandle. Right. You know right. what I mean? That they, they have every right to do that. And that it just, yeah. Part of the yes, right. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next, creating a fund to provide increased resources to entities serving at risk populations. We didn't really talk about this one. Yeah. I don't see it as. Oh, sorry. It was on the donation box. Part of the box that she was at. You mentioned like. I think that I actually think that's already happening a lot, <laughs> and but I think we need something different and more. So mm -hmm. that's why I would be prioritize that because I think it's already happening. Yeah, and also it just seems like it's not something the city should needs to be right. doing. Like United Way is doing that. Like mm -hmm. um, different faith communities are doing it. Right. Mm -hmm. um, different businesses are doing it. Right. So. Mm -hmm. So it, yeah, I think, I guess, and there's the frog. Right. <laughs> so there's opportunities for that already. Yeah. I think it, uh, I, it would be helpful, I feel, for me, if I understood more how much does get, get given to sort of um, the whole rather than to individual people. I mean, I just feel like, is it like 89? dollars in a week that they get in the frog? I mean, how much, right. how much is, is there a way we could pool these funds so that they could be put to make um, lockers outside Forbes or, I mean, that's, it's just, I don't know if it's possible, but it's just a question. Well, I guess then, see, that's not, that what this second bullet is, creating a fund to provide resources to entities serving. So what you're suggesting is, having a fund to raise money for a specific thing. That's different than this. But I feel like this suggestion is just redundant because not that though they have enough money, I'm not saying they have enough money, but they do have CBGB money, they have state funding, they have United Way funding. So it just doesn't seem like there needs to be cre create a new way for people to give to this. Right. It's, yeah, and it's it's not, it, there's not enough detail about how the funds that went in would be distributed. Um, yeah, it's too big. It's too big. Yeah. Press too big. Okay. Create options for giving, ways to give through technology. 
that can't be difficult. Well, how much, how much it would bring in, I don't know, but I would have thought that shouldn't be too difficult. See, I perceive there's a bunch of stuff that people on North Canada can get to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, here's a fund for man. Here's a fund for mm-hmm. the cops up here. What if you're? This is supposedly what's gone like. You come in from East Longmeadow in a shop, and you see people on the street, and you say, "I don't want to give any individual money. Mm-hmm. I'd rather." The, to me, this is what the frog was about. Mm-hmm. Yes. I want to give, but I don't want to give to one individual. Yes. So it's sort of how do you come up with a way? that people, if they wanted to, could give. And I, I think that's what this is about. Not saying yeah. this is low priority, yeah. but I think that's what this thing is really sort of about. Um, Almost a virtual front. It's a virtual front. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's right. It's yeah. like when you drive, you go to visit Rome, mm-hmm. and you're trying to figure out how do I deal with all the panhandlers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. It would be so easy to put a QR code on the frog statue. Oh. Actually, if, ironically, and this is sort of off the subject, but adding on to that, it does feel it. actually every country and every city should have such a thing. Yeah. Because when you wherever you go, there's that there's issue. Mm-hmm. There's, mm-hmm. And you don't, you go to somewhere like Rome, I haven't actually been to Rome for years, but you, you go to Rome and you think, I don't want to give to this person, but I should do something. But I don't know if people coming to shop here from Long Meadow particularly think I should do this, but maybe they do. Well, I mean, one thing could happen is like the parking garage, there could be a sign that says, you know, something about like, if you noticed, I don't know how to do it, but basically communicate if you noticed a fair number of panhandlers and you want to contribute to community efforts to support them go to this site. I think the technology, we could figure out the technology pretty easy. I think yeah. the same question as the previous one, though, how, who collects it and how is it decided where it gets sent? That's a good point, yeah. I don't know who decides what happens with the frog mouth. Yeah. Does anybody well, get it? Is it service I'm that? Reading so, a, the article about it, I thought it, most of that money went to Mana, but I don't remember for sure. I think it That's okay. I think it's dedicated. Well, anyway, I like your idea of putting a QR code on the frog. <laughs> easy, easy. And, and actually, I think now when you read travel books about you're about to go here, and that they include mm-hmm. the panhandling and mm-hmm. stuff, and they'll say, by the way, instead of doing it panhandlers, here are the websites. Oh, do they? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. The worst panhandlers I've run into were in work. Padua, sitting, eating at a lunch table, and people just keep coming up and asking me for money, and they don't go away. Mm-hmm. Where, where was it? Padua. Um, it's one of the beautiful, it's actually a stunning, beautiful place. We're across the street from a massive, beautiful cathedral, mm-hmm. you know, eating lunch, looking at the view, and people just keep walking up and mm-hmm. asking me for money, which nobody here would ever do. Next item is support a multidiscipline de escalation team. I think. Oh, so she's maybe we increase the number of locations where we, we um, offer like, the option to donate mm-hmm. beyond the clock. I need to ask about maybe another end of Main Street or something. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Why not? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It is a welcoming message. Mm-hmm. No, it's like how can you get more visitors to do this, right? Mm-hmm. It makes me think about like when you go to Stop and Shop and they say, "Do you want to do you want to round up to donate to something?" Yes. I wonder if there's a city-based way we can. That like parking, but I don't know. You know, yeah. Like in a way, it's kind of like um, meals tax, hotel tax. Yes, there there are constraints on the on how cities can like fees and 
uh, how taxes. No, this is voluntary. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm thinking voluntary. But still, the, the city collects them and processes them. Mm -hmm. Right. I don't know. Yeah, it's beyond my knowledge. Okay. Um, so, support multidiscipline de escalation team that has a high impact on. Um, I mean, I think the thing we can say about that is that it's it's it would be supportive to the police department mm -hmm. as well as supportive to people who are vulnerable. Mm -hmm. See, I wouldn't have thought that would be that difficult if, and maybe the police department already liaises with they do. CSO. Would, yeah, they do. They do. I mean, if they have this kind of a, but if they have like, the thing that happened on outside City Hall. Well, that's the one I'm thinking of, but they didn't bring a social worker with them to that. That's why they got into hot water. Oh, I totally know. Yeah. But I wonder if, yeah. I, so I don't so know. if they have funding for a team, mm -hmm. it might be easier for them to access right. people who are not just there to do the arrest. And it requires training, yeah. de-escalation training, and helping the police know when they need to ask for help. I, I like that it's both supportive of the police and mm -hmm. to people who might be impacted. Yeah. And versions of it are definitely impact happening differently. But you, you also, it's the kind of thing, it doesn't happen all that much. So you can't have a paid full-time team waiting to do this. No, you can't. You'd have to build on something. You know, like the emergency services are already there at CSO at the moment. Or could it be, I understand there's like, like there's volunteer uh, teams that go to disaster areas. What do they call those? Crisis intervention teams? Yeah, absolutely. I wonder if there would be a willingness on the part of people with skills to volunteer to be part of de-escalation. See, I think there ought to be, you know, the problem is like, when do you have social workers in the emergency room? When does the most domestic violence stuff come in? And, and they're not usually there at the time mm -hmm. when you meet people. Mm -hmm. But if you can debrief after something has happened with a team of people who said, let's talk about what happened. And that's helpful for the next time mm -hmm. you get the situation. Yeah. So that's why I think if we have teams that, even if they're not present, when things happen, but they're yeah. available to help yeah. everybody debrief. Yeah. I mean, do you they certainly already, I mean, they exist when somebody, when there's been like a bad accident or something. Yeah. Right. I'm wondering. They, go to the, they help the firefighters, they help the police. They do do these debriefings. Yes. Yes. And I mean, I, I think probably. This is slightly different person in private practice maybe couldn't afford to do it, but I'm wondering about people that are like, that work like in schools for social work, or Westfield Social Work School, you know, for academic people, maybe they could be. I think supporting something where we say this is important enough to pay people to do it. It's yeah. Important. Well, I, 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 I know, but I, I was responding yeah. to what Davina was saying about how it's like not that often that it would require a person, so how do you do it? Well, but we already have a, an emergency team. At oh, you're so. saying that? Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. just call them. Yes, if there's an emergency situation, people get taken to the, the ER, and a social worker comes, they don't have one all the time. So somebody comes oh, I see. at the moment from CSO. But um, I, I can't see why that same team that's already there couldn't be maybe pulled in. It would be just an extension of the role, actually, yes. of the emergency services. I actually think that it's not that difficult. So it's CSO, not ServiceNet? It used to be ServiceNet. They lost the contract. Oh, OK. Um, CSO got it a number of years ago. And we don't have to get into the details. No, it's not at all. Right, right. right. It's, important. it's very important. Um, create the living room model community day center site. High impact. Do this, 
short-term and long-term mm -hmm. solutions. Um, so that's definitely long-term. Longer-term and that it's a multi, multi-user space. The, I mean, the complicated thing is you're never going to completely sort it out because you've got the thing of, you know, do you only allow sober people in? I mean, there's always the, that issue. Yeah. I mean, you can't, you, it's, you never completely can, but you're going to have way more resources. Mm -hmm. um, you know, some, some of these things, like, like increase opportunities for educational attainment, like, that's a great idea, but it doesn't seem like that's what... That wasn't the problem, but most of the people had completed high school and had completed some post-high school education. Mm -hmm. so that didn't seem like... Right, so I wonder why they came up with this one. Yeah. But also, it just doesn't seem like it's it's in the bailiwick of the city to to do that. How do you make that low priority? Mm -hmm. Last one. We all like the downtown storage units, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. We talked about that a lot. I think we'll also reduce the perception of people that their amount of space they would take up for all the possessions. I think it would actually. Mm -hmm. The sidewalk would feel as cluttered. So, you know, I guess one thing is having having these priorities might help with like just dispersing like uh, CPA money. Cause, so, like, there may be some pots of money that we don't necessarily think about that could be used. So, like for this low low threshold housing mm -hmm. is what I was thinking of. Mm -hmm. Yes, so low threshold housing units would obviously have a high impact mm -hmm. and would make the, if we had enough of those, we wouldn't be in the storage units. That's true. This is all assuming that we have this sort of static number of people right now, which is, it seems very natural they're actually about to do the point in time con um, count which they deliver to anyway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I think it'd be interesting to look at what the trend is because it feels to me like it's been pretty stable. But, but mm -hmm. you, it feels to you it's probably pretty stable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. That's just. Based on that. So this is my old work the way of saying. I think if we got housing for 15 people and they were no longer in the streets, 15 more people would. Mm -hmm. I, think I think we're in a steady state. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. On the reality is, for so many people, life is so hard they can't manage. Mm -hmm. They can't manage the realities. And there aren't enough jobs that, that suit. There are drug problems and mm -hmm. mental health. Well, that's actually why I, I think part of what the data shows is there's an assumption that there's an education problem, mm -hmm. and that's actually not mm -hmm. all the problem. And you do so many resources yeah. to get people to a place where that was what helped. Yeah. So I, I was also reading about the stuff about low threshold housing. Um, I, of course, I think it would be useful, but there's a lot of data about it's not working on um, any problems oh. with it. Oh, really? There are experiments going on to reduce emergency room use by frequent flying <laughs> patients with mental health problems. And in New York, they've, they've basically gotten blocks of apartments, placed people, and the outcome variable is reducing hospital costs. And they fix that. But then, so and people are feeling good about having a place. But then, usually, there are a bunch of people in line waiting for housing. And the people who are going to the emergency room all of a sudden jump to the top. Wow. And they, this, this is the real problem. You've taken out all of the people who were quiet 
and going through the line. Uh, it's just a, it's, it's hard. Yeah. But it, um, and underneath it is, we don't have enough reasonably priced housing. Mm. Yeah, discrepancies of wealth in this country. Yeah. So I was surprised at that too. That was the other thing that came out of the North Hampton Connects mm. with um, mm -hmm. this is all about income inequality. Yeah. Perfect. Anyway, sorry. I can't stop. Mm -hmm. Uh, couldn't you use advisory board for the I didn't see how that popped into this from what I saw in the data. Mm -hmm. I wasn't, I'm sure there's a story there, but. Mm -hmm. I, I was struck by the relatively low age of folks who were, who they interviewed as young as 22. Mm -hmm. On the streets. Yeah. Um, I, I know about 80% of kids in foster care end up. Well, the, there used to be a youth advisory board, and I assume that it disbanded because it wasn't interested. But it was the youth, the youth advisory, but it's different from youth commission. Oh, that's what I'm thinking of. Yeah. The youth commission. We have a youth commission. Oh, that's still around. Yes. Oh, okay. So I guess I wonder why there needs to be a youth advisory board if there's a youth commission. Uh, well, their text says. Focusing services on youth and younger adults who are facing life challenges is a prudent path toward reducing incidence of adult homelessness. It's interesting. If you think, if you take that figure of eighty percent of foster of kids in foster care end up on the street, which is an appalling figure, you know, you have something like Friends of Children, which helps. Maybe all the low threshold housing actually should be focused on them and helping them get themselves going. Mm -hmm. I think there are specific challenges to emerging adulthood that are different now than they were 25 years ago. Yeah, absolutely. So how would we prioritize this? I, 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 would, I was going to say it's low priority, but there's probably something I don't understand so I probably thought the, the advisory board. Yes, I I thought it, that would be a low priority, but there are some issues that I just have no clue about. Mm -hmm. Creating a flexible day labor or flash job program. Well, I said I really like this, but I guess I only like it if people, people who would use it would like it. <laughs> I made an assumption that it's in here because, yeah. yeah. Of the people they interviewed, many of them did say that they would, they would like that. They would like that. There are, of course, challenges with regular schedules, yeah. you know, for example. Like, I think it's very hard for us as we make it sort of as we offer sort of advice and try and prioritize to, to sort out what's what what in an ideal world is needed and what is practical it's so you get so confused by that yeah because the idea of the job you are you do sometimes hear people say you know look like a job yeah yeah you have the to out with some signs say willing to work yes mm -hmm. yeah so Yes, fortunately, it's not up to us to figure out the logistics. Okay, so so we like it. I, there's there's definitely a uh, human dignity factor. Yeah, makes it high impact. And I think we decided the the high the if any machine is like not a good idea. They they yeah folks that they interviewed didn't seem to want it. I think they have some security concerns, but like it needs to be stopped. Yes. Yeah. Um, we talked about the code of ethics more as a sign, an aspirational sign. Um, 
gift cards or tokens for downtown goods, vouchers, for housing permits. These were these were less lesser ideas. I don't know. We have to prioritize those. Okay, so let me try and pull these together and um, let's send it around for comments. And I'll send your comments directly to me and we will send it to the mayor. Thank you. Yes. And I will try and get this to you uh, within the next 48 hours. You know, I missed the meeting where I did it, that where the mayor came and spoke. Mm -hmm. So let me characterize sort of like what his. I, I can read the report, I'm just curious what the tone was like. And if you said it, the report just reflects this, and that's fine, but I'm just curious. It was very respectful, and I think he really appreciated uh, presenting to us. And his um, chief of staff, Alan, was there, and he was very talking to both of us. I think we were among the last stops on his talking tour, so he had given the message quite a few times. Um, but I, I, I think he's quite pleased and proud with what. Yeah, yeah I got the feeling he was very excited about it. Yeah. It's a very long presentation about the report. Yes. And a PowerPoint presentation. Um, I remember him in the early call. This is the one I thought should so, mm -hmm. And we were all, you know, we all felt like it was very, very comprehensive and compassionate. Um, and respectful. Yeah, very respectful. Including the right people. Yeah. I was pleasantly surprised. Yeah. I remember people who mentioned that they were skeptical mm -hmm. that there would be ever, even at the formation of this work group, that following, like, Report and presentation, um, they were much more supportive. So, that's a, that we All right, back to the agenda. Um, I'm going to suggest we put the discussion about leadership and membership off till the next meeting. Um, who has the request to co-sponsor push it? Can I just say one thing about that, though? Mm -hmm. That we can push it off to next meeting, but do we want to ask people to think about whether they would be willing to step up? Because you you don't want to be chair anymore. Yes, and I was thinking about it as well, that um, we should maybe be have a little more clarity about roles. Um, if Because if, there's nothing in our bylaw that says we have to have particular roles, so um, it might be a longer, a longer conversation. We could think about um, rotating chair and okay. whether we need another role besides chair. So there are, and so at the moment, the group has six people, the five of us and we're all. Yes. And I thought that would be something we could talk about, too. Yes. Yes, but I do want to get to. Yep. Yeah. No, I'm just, yeah. yeah. So, really you know, quickly, uh, this was suggested by Lisa Klein. Um, she, I don't know, I haven't had a conversation with her about it specifically, but um, she asked um, the King of Rights Commission to, you know, to, to consider something like this. And I wonder, if, you know, this is very specific, mm -hmm. um, and there are any number of organizations. But for us, I feel like it may be, if we're to co sponsor something like this, it would have to, it would be part more part of the, the film series. You know, this wouldn't be the only topic that we focus on. Um, mm. and, uh, so, this is uh, evidently uh, the screen. The screening has to be, you have to apply to, to screen this. Um, it is free. And just looking at it, the list of looking at their scheduled screenings, there aren't any that have occurred here in New England mm -hmm. that, that are not in public spaces. Anyway. So 
Um, so yeah, potentially, you know, I'd be interested in this. I, I, I know there are other films that we talked about that um, could be part of a, a series if we wanted to do this stuff. Um, there's one called Shelter about uh, homeless children use. Um, that might be something we don't so where's the film happening? There's, this is just an idea. We oh. would have to, we would have to request a screening um, in our area. So, um, but it's, um, but of course, you know, the, the hard work is in getting the venue and marketing this and, and finding some kind of a schedule to get. Um, so, okay, I miss it. I, so, so she's asking us to do that work or she's asking us to just say. She just consider, consider activities like this oh. for, you know, so, is this just for us or co-sponsoring it with somebody else? I think she mentioned the you know, school board would be interested. I, it was fairly vague. I think it's like a Facebook um, post. post. Um, and you know, I, I can follow up. Maybe she has more experience with this. And, um, but, hmm. I think. Yeah, I think if. Um, if there is a if there is a specific event that we're being asked to, that exists already, we're being asked to co-sponsor. We could consider it, but until we have fuller, right? Like, it's hard to initiate this, yeah. right? Yeah. So yeah, we would definitely be open to co-sponsoring something like this. We have to. We have done in the past. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yes. I guess what I heard, yeah, I, I would prefer if an organization who was planning to screen this came to us and said, would you co-sponsor this right. with us? We've set it all up. Right. I think yeah. we would, yeah. we would, I would be supportive of that, but mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. to take the lead. Right. Yeah. Um, the next thing, Safe Cities Ordinance, mm -hmm. Megan and I were there, as was Rachel. And mm -hmm. Rachel didn't get up to say anything, but Megan and I both did. And I, I just wanted to report back that we did it. And we, we both felt like it was a really good thing to do. And that was like a perfect subject for mm -hmm. the Human Rights Commission to be, you know, supportive of. And, you know, it was never a question that they were going to pass it. But I think it's still good that we got off the top. Mm -hmm. so, yes. Thank you both so much for your yeah. Some people, like some people, were there for other things, but at, at the, they got and said, "Well, now that I hear about the city's ordinance, I'd like to support that too." And then, I, then they spoke about what they were supporting. Okay. Funny. Um, and then this other thing is something I put on the agenda, which is that um, the uh, worker center is really is really focusing on this mm -hmm. campaign to get non-immigrant non-immigrant driver's license, is that the right word? Non-documented. Non non undocumented. Non oh, sorry, I said that wrong. Yeah. Undocumented people getting driver's licenses. And um, I, they would be interested. I, I, I wanted to say, ask if we could just tell them we'd like to help them in any way we can, lend support. Well, not in any way we can, <laughs> but like, if they need us to do something, we would like to do it, like with a reason, write a letter, because it seems like to I, me, I it's think it's a no-brainer. Okay. Agreement. Yeah. Washington State does it. People go from Oregon over to Washington State. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There are already Georgia states and the District yes. of Columbia. Yeah. And I thought it was really interesting. The sheriff in Franklin County has come out in favor of it. And you never had to be asked to show your passport to get a driving license. Until recently. So, okay, great. I'll, I'll let them know that if there's testimony or something, mm -hmm. like, or they want us to sign something. We'll it was that. already in the tutorial. Yes, Paul. Well, that was just that we had started this idea of having other people on the commission write guest columns, Megan wrote one, and mm -hmm. I didn't just want to put it out there to see if anybody wanted to write one. 
So, the, so my column, the head of my column, is to to reintroduce commission mm -hmm. to recruit mm -hmm. um, using the my personal experience. Um, what would the next? What would they sense for the next column? Topically. Mm -hmm. Well, there's always a need for visibility and um, and numbers. Right. So maybe that maybe we could give some thought to that and come back to that in two weeks. Okay. Just looking at the time. It could, it could be related to the uh, recommendations. That sounds like that would be the next thing. Yeah. yeah. So our next meeting is the 22nd. Uh, the fourth Wednesday. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I would have thought it would be the 20th. Like later. Like, no, I think it might be because it begins on the, it began on the first. Oh, month. yeah, you're right. Two, three, four. It is in two weeks. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Two weeks. Okay. Well, the whole gender bathrooms. Can I just say one thing about that, though? Yes. Do we want to consider just meeting the last one? Is there a fifth? So that, is there a third one? Twenty-nine is a bit. Yeah, so that so that we don't meet in two weeks? Sure. If people are available on the 29th, I'd be highly supportive of that. Yeah. I know. Yes. Yeah, I am too. Yeah. Both days right now. Yes. So Wednesday. So the 29th instead of the 22nd. Mm -hmm. I'll send that in. And uh, that all gender bathroom is there just because I think that is something we should work with Rachel on now that she's on the city council. What specifically though? Oh, I, there's, I just have this thought that, that um, we could raise public awareness about the importance of all gender bathrooms. And um, you know, not, nothing regulatory, but encouraging businesses to have all gender bathrooms and encouraging the city to work towards it. So whether you know, if, if the city council was interested, maybe we could do co co sponsor a resolution. You know, saying why it's important. There are some creative options um, because the word gender is so charged. Um, I know that the sociology conference, instead of labeling bathrooms, they quote the gender label bathrooms simply as bathrooms with stalls, bathrooms without stalls. Yes, I've seen that. Yeah. Well, that's the same thing, just different, just different language. I mean, mm -hmm. that's that's a fine idea too. But basically, okay. we're talking about like having them used interchangeably. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something to encourage. Yeah. Oh, I've seen bathrooms with urinals, bathrooms with iron. Yeah. But I think you can't. I mean, you have, if you if you're doing it to so that people will feel like they can use whatever bathroom they want to, I think you have to do a little bit of public education around it too. Only works if you know, like all these social conferences. Tend to support something like this. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, I don't know. Public spaces, private businesses. Yeah. Well, that's another thing that, that the downtown needs more bathrooms that are not for customers only. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, true. Well, I, so have you experienced? I I thought all the bathrooms were people could just go in and use them. There's some dorms. Oh yeah, there's a couple of dorms. Yeah. There's one downstairs here. Is that one still here? During business hours. Yeah. But only during business hours. Yeah. 
Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's my opinion. just says women's, men's, and then says they just added a sign self identified. Where? Last month. Oh, last month. I just was there. So the first time I've seen Oh. So it, it is, I think we, maybe we can come back to this discussion. It's actually a radical thing to say it's an all gender bathroom. Yes. Mm -hmm. and yes. It, it's, and it actually, because stalls, no stalls, is still playing out gender. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's a still binary way of viewing things. And um, mm -hmm. Lori has been involved with a campaign that our church just changed to all gender bathrooms. And it actually required a lot of work mm -hmm. with a group of people who are sort of already pretty comfortable. Mm -hmm. And the UUA General Assembly, which was at the Spokane, Washington Convention Center, they took down all of the men and women's signs. And they became all gender mm -hmm. They so, just said bathroom. Yeah. It was a big deal. Big deal. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah. It's the first time I've been in a place that really did that. Mm -hmm. So, it's, you know, it's not a big deal, but it's a big deal. Yeah, that's, a, see, I know what, exactly what you're saying. And my thought is that, yes, it is a big deal, yet it still needs to happen. And so, like, there needs to be some leadership Ship around it around it to say this is something that needs to happen, even if it don't, doesn't happen for two years. No, it's almost it is almost aspirational. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, because that's how it starts, yes. and then it becomes just the way things are. So, um, I don't. Yeah, I feel better about making a proposal, perhaps to the city council, that moving towards all gender. Non-gendered. That we have to find whatever the right phrase yeah. is at the moment. Um, all inclusive. All inclusive. Mm -hmm. I don't. Yeah. yeah. I, the way that we did it at the UU, I thought was great because there's little signs in each stall that explains why mm -hmm. for visitors and stuff. And now the doors now say because there was going to be the first idea was to have one all gender yeah. and one right. male. Yeah. Is that it? I forgot. But then it, over time, we realize they both have to be all gender. We can't do it this way. And uh, but it does require some bringing people along. Yes. So maybe what we want to do, we can talk about this next time. But maybe what we want to do is reach out to the city council and say, can you appoint a study committee to do it? <laughs> okay. Maybe it's going to take a task force to do it. Mm -hmm. All right. Yes. Yeah, so we have to think. Are we talking about all city buildings? Yeah, I mean, I think the, should, the city I, should take the lead. Mm -hmm. And I don't think you can require businesses to do it. We can encourage them. Right. I mean, and the, it's easy for the businesses that have single stall mm -hmm. restrooms. That's totally easy. Yeah. It's the one where there's multiple mm -hmm. stalls, but it's harder. So. And it starts in schools. Yes. That's where it should mm -hmm. needs to start. And that's how everybody will get. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But yeah. it's also the most stormy area. I was going to say, yeah, that'll, that'll raise the profile of the human rights commission in town. <laughs> 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 but the schools do have, um, don't they all have some place that people can go who are non-binary? Like, I don't know the answer. Oh, okay. I thought they did. I thought the Northampton schools did. But I think it's like at all, at all ages in elementary as well. I think it might be something as simple as like the nurse's bathroom or you know like yes. one private or bathroom. Or you use the, the handicap bathroom right. usually a single yeah. stall. So that's probably not really addressing the issue quite enough. But We are at 6.59. Okay. Um, we did a lot and we have a lot to do next <laughs> later this month. But I would entertain a motion to adjourn unless there's, there's any new business. Second. Second. Okay. Approved. Aye. Opposed. Nobody opposes. Nobody wants to stay. All right. Thanks, everybody. Sorry about my.